Hi there everyone, welcome to our Easter Reflections Online, which will be taking place for the next two weeks, posting every day, so you can follow them along on the Facebook page for Medhead Christian Fellowship each day. And over these next two weeks, we'll be posting a reflection on the Easter story uh, and going beyond it to the Ascension. We're taking the idea of our, our theme from Philippians chapter 2, where we read that Jesus was obedient to death and then exalted to the highest place. And we'll be going through that story with you over the next two weeks. So today we start with Jesus' entry to Jerusalem, known by many people as Palm Sunday because of the palm branches that were waved in his honour as he, as he came into Jerusalem. Now this is one of the few instances in Jesus' ministry that are recorded in all four Gospels. Not just because it's a great story, but because it's a very significant one. Let's read what John has to say about it from John chapter 12, verses 12 to 19. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it, as it is written, do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. And many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. The whole world has gone after Jesus. Jesus arrives in Jerusalem to a hero's welcome. He's king for the day, if you like. He's drawn huge crowds and his popularity is at its height. Uh, Lazarus has been raised from the dead. The story has gone round. There are huge crowds in Jerusalem for the Passover anyway. And everyone is caught up in the fervour and euphoria of this, of this great event as this popular hero uh, comes into Jerusalem. As obviously the story unfolds, we'll see all too clearly that this adulation doesn't last. And it's clear also that Jesus doesn't have his head turned by uh, the crowd's favour towards him. He's clearly focused on his mission. For Jesus, this is a courageous journey. He set his face as like a flint towards Jerusalem. He knew what the end result would be. It took real courage for him to get on the donkey that day and ride into Jerusalem. Because he knew the consequences of what he was doing. He'd chosen the time the time of the great feast, the Passover feast, and the place, Jerusalem, the, the, the city, uh, the great city of God. But he knew how it would all end. It wasn't just a courageous act by Jesus, it was also a prophetic act. He didn't enter into Jerusalem on a young donkey because he was tired, but he did it deliberately. He knew what he was doing. You see, it had been prophesied by Zechariah many years before that the Messiah or Christ would come into the city in this way. And these are the words, of course, that John quotes in his passage of scripture. Without words, Jesus is actually declaring, I am your king. I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. And it was clearly understood by the crowds what he was what he was saying that day. They were chanting and singing the words of Psalm 118. O Lord, save us, literally Hosanna, and spreading palm branches before him. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the king who comes in the name of the Lord. It was also understood by his enemies. Jesus was not only doing something courageous and something prophetic, declaring who he really was, but also something very provocative. His entry into Jerusalem in this way was a challenge to the powers that were against him and they didn't like it. If you read Luke's account of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem in Luke 19, you'll see that very clearly expressed by Luke. This was to be the final showdown and Jesus was ready for it. That's easy for us, I guess, today to get caught up 
in worship when we go to big events, isn't it? The adulation, the the conferences we go to, uh, and the adulation of Jesus, the re- euphoria of it all. Kind of carry, we get carried away with that, don't we? We love to raise our voices and our hands in worship together when we meet together. Goodness knows we're ready for those days again and declare Jesus is our King and our Lord and our Savior. But when Jesus comes as King, He comes to rule and reign in us. He comes to cleanse the temple of our lives. He overturns the tables that we've set out with our own goods. His reign is glorious. He's a good king. But he also challenges us to follow him to the cross. Over these next two weeks, we'll read more in this story. The challenges that Jesus gave The challenge to himself to be obedient to death on a cross and the glorification uh, of him through the resurrection and ascension. Let's pray. Lord, save us. Lord, come to us. Lord Jesus, we declare that you are our king and we bless your holy name this day. We welcome you to rule and reign in our lives. Come to us this Easter change us speak to us may we hear your voice and may we gladly not just sing the songs of praise but bow our lives to your kingly reign within us we ask these things in your precious and almighty name amen god bless you more tomorrow